What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're turning the Galaxy S8 into a desktop computer. And we're gonna do that thanks to the Dex Station, which is sold by Samsung. This retails for about $150, and effectively, this is just a hub to connect all the desktop peripherals you'll need to turn the phone into a computer. Getting to the accessories, we get a quick start guide. We also get a wall adapter. This is the same adaptive fast charger that comes with the Galaxy S8. And of course, we get a USB-C cable. So the dock itself is actually designed to be Portable. It folds up and can be stored easily. But otherwise, it's really meant to be used in only one orientation in this upright configuration. So when you slot the phone in, it makes connection to the USB-C port at the bottom. Now this USB-C port is flexible, so you won't damage the phone when you take it in and out. Now the dock itself is also cooled. So if you look at the backside, you'll see some ventilation that keeps the phone cool while it's charging and while you're using it with an external monitor. So in terms of the ports along the back, we have two USB type A ports. We have an ethernet port in addition to an HDMI port and a USB-C connector. There's a few things to know about these ports. These are USB 2.0 ports, so they're not high-speed ports. And of course, just like any other USB port on a desktop, this can be used for external storage. So you can manage files on several drives, such as hard drives or even card readers, and use the onboard My Files app to manage it all. And of course, because this is a phone, you can place and receive phone calls or text messages. In terms of our display output, we have HDMI, which reportedly supports 4K, but currently that's not available just yet. We also have a USB Type-C connector, so this will support charging. In fact, you need to be connected to USB-C to power the dock itself. But otherwise, this cannot be used for display output. So even if you have a display that supports display output over USB-C, unfortunately, that's not supported here just yet. And of course, with Ethernet, you can bypass Wi-Fi and go right for the hardline connection. This is kind of a nice feature, especially since many laptops don't even have this. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this is only compatible with the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus, but you can imagine future Galaxy devices like the Next Note will support this as well. So in terms of setting this up, of course, you need a monitor. Now, this supports any 1080p monitor over HDMI. Now, of course, this will work on other monitors like 4K or ultra-wide monitors as I'm using now, but it doesn't support those resolutions. So right now it's just 1920 by 1080. So if you use any other monitor, it's gonna to have to scale to that resolution. And in my case, because I'm using this ultra wide monitor, it's gonna be distorted. Of course, the next ingredient we need is a keyboard and a mouse. Now a keyboard is still optional because we have an on-screen keyboard if you want to use that, but you definitely need a mouse. Now they can be connected via a standard USB-A connector, or you can use a wireless transmitter as I'm using, or you can use Bluetooth directly to the phone itself. So you have tons of connectivity options. So once you get all the accessories connected to the dock, you're ready to go ahead and slot the phone into place. And once you do, you'll actually be prompted on the phone to either launch screen mirroring or the DeX experience. So of course, we wanna go with the DeX experience and take a look at what's going on here. Now, DeX is already baked into the Galaxy S8. You don't have to install anything. It just happens soon as you connect it. Now, it does take a few seconds to load. It's not instantaneous, but otherwise, it's a pretty quick process. Now, although it looks like a completely different experience, you have to keep in mind that it's basically everything from your phone just reformatted for this screen, which means you preserve all the apps and files from your phone despite the new look. And of course, you can disconnect your phone anytime and it restores everything back to the small screen. So digging through this interface here, it's pretty intuitive. It's kind of like a cross between Chrome OS and Android and pretty much looks like any other desktop OS, but there's a few things to know about here. In the lower left corner here, you have these Android keys and that does include our app drawer, our recent apps, and the home button. So in terms of the app drawer, we can scroll through our apps. We also have a specific section just for apps that support the DeX interface. So that does include our Microsoft apps and you can download those if you haven't already. There's not a whole lot of apps here, but uh, there's already quite a few apps that support the scaling of DeX. We also have our recent apps, so we can see all of our recently accessed apps and you can bring them forward just by tapping on them. But of course, just like any good Android device, you can also close them all out or close them one at a time. Of course, we also have a home button, and the home button also activates the Google Voice Assistant. Just tap and hold, and you'll see a pretty familiar interface. Now, this is one of the apps that does not scale, so you can't resize this, but you can minimize it or bring it back forward. Now, for apps that you can resize, such as YouTube, I can resize like so, or I can maximize the window by hitting the maximize key, just like any other desktop OS. 
You can also minimize and maximize the app just by tapping the icons in the taskbar. So this taskbar is where you'll see all of your recently opened apps or your active apps. All I have to do is bring them forward by tapping on them. And if you hover the cursor over them, you can see it does give you a preview of what each app is doing. You can see I also just got a notification pop up in the lower right corner. So this is where all of your notifications will appear. Now for most of these apps, if you close them out, they disappear from the taskbar. But if you want to pin them, you can do that. Now I'm just going to go to this app drawer and drag and drop something to the screen here. I'm going to open it up. And again, this is one of the apps that does not scale. It's got a fixed size here. Uh, so you can see right now that the app, if I close it, will disappear. So if I want to retain that app, let's open it again. What I'll have to do here is pin it to the taskbar. So now when I close it here, you can see just the icon disappears. And I can go ahead and move it around just by clicking and holding and dragging it around. Again, just like any other desktop OS, same with the desktop. Now in terms of using multiple apps at once, it's actually pretty surprising here. Now it does act differently than a desktop environment. So right now you can see that this Instagram video is playing right now, but if I click on another app you can see it suspends. That's kind of a, a trait you expect with Android. So you do see that happening within the desktop experience as well. But for things that support background play like YouTube, you can see it uh, continuously plays no matter what. But overall it's pretty impressive in terms of how it manages switching between these different windows and overall performance has been excellent. And if you just want to hide all of this, just hit the home button and it goes away. In terms of uninstalling, you just go to the app drawer here, right click click and click uninstall. Of course, we can also just search for the apps we want, and then we can also go to our settings here. So we can see apps for the Samsung DeX, Samsung DeX settings. So if you go to the DeX settings, this will take you directly to the DeX control panel. Now, of course, with a keyboard attached, if I start typing something here, it just brings up search. So Google search comes right up. So in the lower right corner, we have our expandable and collapsible status bar. So this does include our notifications. So if you click on this, this will show us all of our notifications, which does have some pretty familiar features, such as clear all and block notifications. So this allows us to control the notification settings for each individual app. Uh, of course, we can also just jump to some of the uh, recent notifications right here. So I have the first three, so Twitter, YouTube, and more. Of course, right next to our notifications are the quick settings. And the quick settings have been modified and simplified for the desktop experience, but there's a few things here that don't quite make sense, such as our flashlight. So I'm not sure why that's still here, but of course, uh, you can quickly turn on your flashlight if you just want some ambient light on your wall. Of course, we have a few other things that are useful, such as Wi-Fi. And if you want to get to the control center for that specific setting, just click and hold until it takes you right to it. I think the most important quick setting to know about here is audio output because by default it outputs audio through the phone speaker, not your display. So this is where you go to select your display instead of your phone. In this third section, we also have our Finder. So this allows us to open up our universal search tool. We also have a screen grab feature. So you take a screen grab of the entire screen and you can edit or share that file. Uh, we also have our volume control. So we can individually control all of our volume settings. And then we also have a keyboard. So in theory, you can actually just use a mouse with the decks. You don't need a physical keyboard because you can use this on-screen keyboard if you want. Of course, we also have wallpapers here. So if you right click on the desktop, we have four images we can pick from in addition to our gallery. Now in terms of the full screen YouTube app, you can see it's actually well suited for this layout. It's kind of like landscape on an Android tablet effectively. So you have all your uh, videos along the right and then you can maximize our video right here by clicking that. What you can't do here is change the screen resolution or the resolution of the video. I'm not sure what resolution it is right now, but it seems to be set to the maximum resolution, which is 1080p. And I can also hit escape to exit the full screen mode just like you would on a desktop and of course if I want to exit the uh, full screen app here I'll have to hit the uh, maximize or minimize button. Funny enough here you still have to swipe to dismiss a video playing in the background. Now not all apps will be supported here so for example if I go to the app drawer here and try to launch a game you'll get a pop-up that tells us that it can't run in this mode. Now of course if we go to the settings panel we have a Samsung DeX panel and this will allow us to adjust the screen timeout. We also have our pointer speed so we can change the speed of our cursor on the screen. By default, I think it's a little too fast, so I would dial that back. Uh, we also have our on-screen keyboard settings. If you want to pick a different on-screen keyboard, you can. We do have text-to-speech in here as well, so that will work using the microphone on the phone. Now, if you're a fan of keyboard shortcuts, you're going to want to take a look at pointer speed and physical keyboard settings. So if we go to keyboard shortcuts, you can see all of them that are available here. So some of this is pretty familiar. So, for example, if you want to toggle through your apps, you have Alt-Tab and a few others. Now, you'll see reference to this meta key. That's basically referring to whatever keyboard you're using. So in my case, I'm using an Apple keyboard, so I would use the command 
command key for that function. So for example, if I want to open up the browser, I would hit meta B and so forth. Now there's a few others they don't mention here, such as command Q for quick settings, as well as command F for the finder. Now I just want to do one last thing here with the recent apps key. So if I click close all, you'll see all of those icons disappear. So ultimately, this is not going to replace a desktop for most people, but it does get the job done, especially if you are used to Chrome in other circumstances. So for example, you're not going to be doing much video editing here, but there are apps that support it. But right now, they're not apps that I personally use. And of course, there's less gaming options in this environment because most games for Android devices do need some sort of touch interface. But in the end, this is one of those things that you wonder why it took so long for Samsung to implement because it works so well and really does serve a need that a lot of people have. Have, which is to just park their phone at a desk and get work done. Alrighty guys, so I really enjoyed playing with this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know with a thumbs up and I'll see you again in my next video.